It's the only way I get through it every day. Right. Listening to all those 10 inch brook trout stories. God, tie my noose every afternoon in my bathroom without my Mountain Dew. If you don't like Mountain Dew, then fuck. For those of you who have gone on our site, who who has seen the slider craze that we uh, we are part of? So a slider is basically a saltwater pattern that was designed to kind of suspend in the water a little bit. It's got a deer hair head on half the hook. And so I started tying some trout flies that were kind of slider-esque. Uh, where it just has deer hair on half of the hook and uh, you know modified it a few times and this pattern has turned in probably in, into probably my best streamer pattern for for 2015 I caught a whole bunch of fish on it and uh, you know anyway so we'll show you how to tie it by the raise of hands who loves tying with deer hair one two maybe five um, creating a nice, tight, really tightly packed head can be a challenge, and so we'll we'll go over some techniques on this fly. It's an articulated fly that uses about a pound and a half of flash, and I'm not wearing my apron, but I don't care. I'm not using it. So we're starting out with some Danville's 210 denier thread. And the back of this fly is just going to be some marabou. So I'm going to take some tan nature spirit marabou. We're going to make kind of a long tail. Now if you wanted to two-tone this, you could definitely do that. But you would put the darker color on first, the lighter color on second, because it does ride upside down, if that makes any sense. I think on the video of this pattern I used white and tan. So again, very messy. Okay, and then uh, so recently we've posted how to make dubbing brushes. Has anyone played with those at all? It's a super fun way to, to, to tie streamers, um, but we're going to do it the old way. The way I do it now is I have dubbing brushes made of just gold ice dub, and I use that. But I'm going to put this in a loop and we'll use it. Um, so if you've tied with ice dub a lot, you'll realize that not all ice dub is created equally. Um, the metallic colors are very long and stringy, um, whereas the, the colors like the black color courtesies on the Chimera is really crinkly and more kind of like dubbing. But this stuff, you pull it out and it's really long and it moves really well. Um, it moves really well in the water. So you guys have a pattern up here called the Sparkle Minnow. You guys heard of the sparkle minnow? Yeah. That's, that's like the pink pookie of streamers, right? Yeah. I just put it in that category, Rich. All right. Yeah, exactly. So the sparkle minnow, minnow is just kind of dumb, easy to fish, right? And so I wanted to create a fly that used some of those elements. So it's got a lot of flash, like the sparkle minnow. So I'm going to create a loop. And the whole body is going to be gold ice dub. A couple ways you can do this. So I'm going to kind of load it up. I forgot my dubbing wax, and dubbing wax really does help with this. But what I'm going to do is just kind of take a really thick clump of this and just stick it all in there. 
and hold this tight and then just kind of spread out that loop. About like that. And then I'll twist it up. So see how that all mats down like that? It's not a problem. I'll just go in here and brush it all out. And then when I wrap this up, the hook shank, I'm not going to do touching turns because it's bulky enough. I don't need to do that. I just kind of do loose, or not, like barber pulled wraps, I guess you call it, all the way up to the front of the fly, and then trim that off. And that's basically the whole back half of the fly. Yes, you can fish it just like this. Never been asked that before. So we matted some more of these fibers down when we wrapped it forward. So we'll go through and we'll touch it up a little bit. Now, if you really want a, a light, dark contrast, you could come in here with a marker and color the top of this flash if you want. Not necessary though. And we'll reinforce it. Okay, the front half of the hook is where all the magic happens on this one. We're going to use, a, again, a Gabonkatsu B10S size 1. And I actually have done really well on a smaller version of this as well that uses a size 2 B10S and a size for 2461. Anyway, um, so this uses barbell eyes, and I'm actually going to use the gold size large uh, pseudo eyes with the yellow pupil. And when you tie this on, you're going to tie it on pretty close to the hook eye because you're going to pack a bunch of deer hair on this side of the eye. Um, and it will kind of cover up that, that hook eye a little bit if you're not careful. So just figure eight that on there, get it nice and sturdy. And you definitely do want to super glue this down because you're going to put a lot of pressure right behind those eyes when you do a, the deer hair head. Put a little bit more on there. Ooh, that's strong stuff. Then again with the, the bead lawn. We'll just tie that on right now and take it back to the bend. So again we're we're all the way back to the to where the, the hook starts to bend. And I'm gonna use some yellow articulation beads this time. Curtis actually got some gold ones in, but he didn't tell me in time. He's hoarding those from me. So we'll stick those on. We'll attach the back half, just like we did the Cheech Leech. We'll tie that down. There are going to be little metal shards everywhere that way, so be careful. Okay, so the front half is going to be just like the back half, except I'm going to tie the, the, the marabou tail a little bit shorter. And it's, it's really uneven and messy, and that's on purpose because I want it to look kind of natural. Not an abrupt line like Curtis talked about. I know you were all paying attention to that part.
right? Okay. So another dubbing loop. Pretty much all these big articulated flies are pretty boring until we get up to the head part because that's what differentiates them a lot. While he's doing that, that's uh, oh, that's hard to tell. That was a big rainbow taken on it, this exact one here. Next to me, it looks really small. Yeah, he's I'm... got the biggest hands. <laughs> I should get a really short guy to be the hand model for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> De Groot, yeah. <laughs> Old sausage fingers, De Groot, huh? Vienna sausage too. Okay, so really the only thing that takes any time on this fly is the head. So back when I was dumb enough to offer these for sale on our website, I would have a bunch of them tied up like this and then I'd just finish the heads. But I mean, it's the head is, is, uh, is really what makes this fly unique and what makes it time consuming. Okay, so if you really wanted to, you could just do like a head of Bruiser Blend. You could do a head of Simi Seal like the Cheech Leech. But to get it to ride properly in the water, the deer hair is really the way to go. So before I start getting crazy with the deer hair, I'm going to switch over to GSP again. And this is truly what deer hair was, or GSP was designed for. Before I do that, I'm going to take out double-edged razor blade we'll trim these off yeah I cut the right one okay so the the Kelly Gallup sex dungeon you seen that it's a fly don't google it but it's a fly but it's a really popular streamer fly and the idea behind that one is it's a bulky head made out of deer hair but it's fairly loosely tied so a loosely tied head will allow it to absorb water and it basically just pushes water it has deer hair on the top and deer hair on the bottom well I wanted a fly that had enough deer hair on the top to kind of make it buoyant on the top to make the fly flip over correctly but I also kind of wanted a diver style head to make it kind of dig down in the water. So that's what we did. A couple of things when you're working with deer hair, with this style of fly. This is deer belly hair, okay? So deer belly hair tends to be thicker than normal uh, deer hair. And it makes this job of packing the hair super tight really easy. So I'm going to use white, and I think this is, is this tan? They call this tan? Is it tan or camel? Tan or camel, one of the two. Anyway, that's what I'm going to use. The next thing that's absolutely critical, if Curtis didn't steal this too, where's my hair stacker? This. This is probably the biggest hair stacker you've ever seen, right? <laughs> anyway, it's, it's critical. Uh, Rich has the Dr. Slick version over there. And it's, it's really good too, but we're going to be using huge clumps of hair for this to get it to work right. Okay? So, these scissors are really, really good for working with deer hair because uh, they're long and one blade serrated, one blade is not. So I'm going to grab a healthy clump, stick the tips in here and cut it off as close to the height as I can. You can see that's how much hair I, I just poked myself. That's how much hair I cut out. So I'm going to kind of fan that hair out in between my fingers and take this little comb and brush out the under fur. That under fur will prevent you from stacking the hair 
right. This is the fly that I need to have the apron on. For. <laughs> right behind you. Well, I, I'm too far into it now. I'm not putting it on. Okay. So now that we've gotten most of that guard hair out, I'm going to grab it by the butts and I'm going to lightly put that in there. So now I'm not going to just drop it directly down. I'm going to kind of feed it in. And now that it's at the bottom, I'll turn it upright. If you just drop it straight in, the hair in the middle will fall down and the hair on the sides won't. And then you've got a big mess. So I'm going to aggressively stack this. You do need to hit this hard. Not like your dumb Drake thing. Just kidding. It's not dumb. It's not dumb. Not very dumb. Um, so there, there I've got all the deer hair for the most part stacked up or aligned I should say. Now a lot of people when they see this head they equate that to spinning deer hair. Okay. Spinning deer hair versus stacking deer hair or packing deer hair are completely different things. Okay. So this this deer hair is not going to spin on the hook at all. And this is a stacking technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the deer hair and put it where I want it to be. So the deer hair, the tips are going to extend a little bit past the barb of the hook. I'm going to grab these with my off hand and then come up here and make two loose wraps. See that? Now, because I'm going to put another color on top of this deer hair, I'm going to put my finger on top of this as I pull it down to make sure that I have a tie-in point. So basically, my finger's here, and I'm just going to pull it straight down and maybe a little bit forward. Okay? Two wraps of thread, that deer hair's there, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay? The more wraps of thread you put in that now, the more your deer hair is going to want to spin around the hook. I don't want it to do that. So if you look on the bottom, there's no deer hair at all on the bottom of that hook. Okay? So I'll leave that for now and I'll prepare another clump. And Rich got Pat Cohen to come here too. I'm going to look like a little pansy doing this compared to what he does. Like he, he's the best in the world at deer hair. No, no question about it. But this is, this is actually probably one of the easiest flies to get this technique because those barbell eyes prevent the deer hair from spinning on you. So it looks hard until you do four or five of them and then you realize this deer hair stuff really isn't very hard. The other thing is to use the right materials. So if you get deer belly hair, um, it, it really is a game changer for it. So another super healthy clump of deer hair. I'm going to clean that out just like the other one. Same thing. Okay, so now with this one, I'm going to put my finger down in that little section again. Make sure that's nice and even. So you can see that's the tie-in point for that hair. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is just kind of lay that down. Wiggle my thread through the white stuff. And two more loose wraps. Okay, there's no pressure on that at all. Now I'm going to take both my fingers and hold this on the bottom and just with one pull the deer hair set. Okay, it's not, that's all you do. That's all the tying in that deer hair needs. So the fly is technically done right now, but on the bottom it looks fairly uncropped and if you want a good looking fly you got to clean that up. So on the bottom I'm just going to kind of tie around the eyes now. I'm not going to tie around the hook shank at all anymore. So I'm going to grab 
Whoa. Hello, microphone. A little bit of Bruiser Blend. Bruiser Blend Junior. And every time I turn this upside down, I've got to grab my thread. And so now I'm going to tie that down right behind those barbell eyes. So I just made a little tiny beard there, okay? Um, I won't be able to whip finish this at all. So what I do, if I can find it, where's the super glue? What's that? Here it is. I'm just going to dab some super glue right on that, on that last tie in point and then trim that off with the razor blade. All right. So, how many of you have gotten a flight at this point so before, right? This is where the rubber meets the road. Um, so, you don't cut the hair with scissors. That's rule number one because this. You'll see as I pass this around, after I cut it, that's harder than a cork. I mean, it's very, very hard. You won't be able to get your scissors in where you need to cut it. Um, so if I have a bodkin, which I had somewhere. Yes. That's mine. You stole. <laughs> get that out of my face. Well, just keep that over there. So I'm going to take my bodkin and I'm going to poke into it and kind of this is probably overkill but I'm gonna make sure that all the fibers aren't folded over they're all sticking out where I need them to be okay so <clears throat> the trick to the trade is a razor blade okay so this is a flexible double-sided razor blade you have to be really careful with these because they will cut you so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend this really aggressively so that it's about the same width as those eyes. And I'm just going to come up under the eyes and in front of the hook shank, or the, the hook eye, and I'm going to cut it and make an angled cut, and it should only take one cut and we're done. Okay? So, I'll stick it up under here. Well, there you go. Oh, man. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Huh? That's worth it right there. <laughs> However, I'm not really happy with how how big that turned out, so I'm going to take one more cut. And just slim that down a little bit. And if you are doing this in your kitchen, either hook up the shop back or prepare for divorce. <laughs> She's excited for the years. <laughs> okay, so. This is where the cautery tool works really well because you can just come in here and you clean up around the, the eye, the hook eye, because I covered up the hook, the hook eye here so you just kind of burn those out. Um, but instead I will do a scissors as best I can. I haven't heard of this cautery tool. What, what is it? It's a, a wand type tool that has a, a heating element, the tip, very, it's very fine tipped. You push a little button and it heats up to super, super hot. Use it to clean out eyes on flies or extraneous fibers that you don't or can't get in there with your scissors and hit. You have to be careful because if you hit your thread, game over. But it's good for cleaning stuff up like that. All right, so that's the articulated trout slider. And as, you, as it goes around, feel free to feel that head and feel how hard and dense that is. But again, like I said, it's really not hard to get deer hair to do that. It's, it just takes a little bit of practice. You've got to make sure you have the right thread, the right hair, the right cutting tool. And even Dave Best could do this. I doubt it. No, <laughs> I got to give Dave a hard time. Ain't back in 1955, man, ain't nobody rock and roll show. And on that giant.